Oh, hey guys, let's make a snowflake. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to create a symmetrical object or any object with sort of radial spokes coming out from the center and how to make it really easy because all you have to do is make one of the spokes and it will duplicate to the other spokes with such an object as a snowflake. So open up Flash and create a new ActionScript 3.0 file. And first off, before we actually get to making the snowflake, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this window right here, the align window. So I got this little guy here. You can open them up using window align right there. And I've got my stage here. Now align is interesting because it works with a few different kinds of, of things. If I hit R for rectangle like this and I can make a square. And unfortunately, the outline is black, as is my background. So I'm going to make the outline a color I can see. Okay, and I can double click on that outline and I can, I don't know, let's, for this tutorial, I'm just going to use thicker lines than I usually do because I want you guys to see stuff. So I can select this whole thing and hit F8. And now when I turn it into a symbol, there's something over here called the registration that you may not have noticed before. And I can actually click on these different dots here. And wherever I click is going to be the center point, I'm saying in quotations, or the registration point of the object. So something you need to know about alignment, I'm going to hit the center one because that's the default one. And you'll see that it put the registration point in the middle on the symbol, right? So when I've got this guy selected here, let me double click inside of here and uh, use the lasso tool so that you can kind of see this a little more clearly. And I'm leaving all the edges there. Okay, and I double click back out of it. So if you're unclear on how symbols work and what I just did, that's totally fine. There's a previous tutorial that I recommend you watch first before we go into this one, because symbols are kind of weird. You have to double click to go inside of them, and then you can double click out on the stage, or you can click up here on scene one to go back out of the symbol. Basically, a symbol is a container that holds objects inside of it, right? Well, what you can do is you can create multiple symbols, and a symbol can be anything. So it could be this line here. If I hit V and select it, hit F8, it becomes another symbol. And let's say on this guy, I want the registration point to be the top right corner. Now, you'll notice something. The rotation point is in the middle. So if I hit Q for rotate and I rotate this guy, it'll rotate about the center point. But the registration point is the top left. This guy up here, there's a little plus sign. It's actually easier to see when I'm zoomed out. Okay, the little uh, plus sign thing with the white marks around it. So that is the center of the symbol. So if I hit Q again, and if I double click on this rotation point, it snaps to what it considers to be the center of the symbol. Now, I keep saying this, and why is this important? You're about to find out. The registration point for your flash file, for everything that you see in this entire stage, this, this uh, black stage that you see here, the registration point is at the top left. So if I click on this guy, and I go to his properties under position and size, Get rid of these other windows here. Under position and size, I have an X and Y position. And you'll notice if I move this guy around, my X and Y change. See, this? they're changing dynamically as I move this around. These numbers are relative to this position in pixels. So my stage is 512 wide, right? So if I put the registration point here on the edge of the stage, I get 512 because on the x-axis coming over from that center point, it's 512 to the right. And if I put it up at the top here, it's gonna be zero on the y. So registration point is important because if I want to align this to zero, zero on my stage, that registration point in that symbol is right there. Now this guy has his registration point in the middle. So if I say zero, zero on him, his center point matches up perfectly with this thing's center point. 
hope that makes sense. Now it gets even cooler. So let's say I put this guy over here at 367 and 305, 0.95 pixels, right? Now if I double click inside of it, I am now operating in a different space. So if I create a symbol, I'm going to create a new layer. And if I create a symbol in here, I'll make this guy a different color so I can see him a little better, a little bit better, and turn him into a symbol. And I'll put that registration point in the middle. You'll notice something. If I put him up here where I think about 0, 0 is at, I actually get negative 365 and negative 304. That's because this dude is measured from the registration point of the symbol that he's inside of. So remember, I'm inside of that symbol 01. So if I were to put this to 0, 0, he would be smack dab, or his registration point, would be smack dab right there in the middle. The same holds true with these align buttons. So when I say align to stage, it's actually not quite accurate. What it means is align to whatever the origin point of what you're inside of is. So if that button is checked and I say, okay, I want you to center and center, oops, and center on zero, zero, it is at zero, zero. So move it over here, center it horizontally, it moved horizontally to be matched up perfect. And then if I center it vertically, it will center perfectly there. If I go center to the left, it'll snap to the left of that point. If I center it to the right, or align it to the right, sorry, I'm using weird words, um, then it snaps so that the edge of it is to the right of that. The same with the uh, top and bottom, right? Align top, align bottom. These distribute ones, we're not going to use in this tutorial. Um, those are handy if you want to like lay out a grid. I think I did use those, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, tutorial number eight or whichever one it was that I made the flipbook template. But anyway, I've just explained a lot about symbols and stages and aligning and registration points. So if I click on this guy, I align him to the left of the stage, it goes over here. If I align him to the right, it goes over here. I know what you're thinking. Why is it not aligning the right is outside of the stage? It's just the way Flash is built. It's kind of it's kind of nice to be able to align to the right wall of your stage rather than like up here like it does inside. Then I can do top and bottom and of course center and center. Let's delete those. So now on to the fun stuff. I'm going to make a snowflake and this is going to be, you know what? It's probably going to be something that I go over in the next tutorial because I feel like kind of covered enough information for you guys. So that's alignment for now. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn more about how to apply that aligning to an actual piece of art. Hope you learned something.